everyone, working of the day coming at you. Um, we are sticking to kind of our normal routine. We're gonna get a little strength today. Um, first off, I wanna wish Greg a happy birthday. It is his birthday today, and I just wanna say, we got two birth or one more birthday tomorrow, so we're gonna have a special joint birthday extravaganza for you guys um, on Tuesday. But I just wanna say, happy birthday, Greg. You're awesome. I hope you enjoy the squats, but it's actually coming tomorrow for you guys. So we'll have some fun tomorrow for your birthdays. But uh, I hope you have a great day with your family, okay? Today though, what we're gonna work with is our, our strength work. Uh, we have our classic kind of start. We have our touchdown squat for five a side. We have our side scale raise for five a side, back scale raise for five a side, and a bridge. If you'd like to load this bridge, um, you can. Just a single dumbbell, plate, ball, animal, whatever you wanna do, child. You can throw them on you and just work on that bridge. That's fine, all right? But again, what we wanna do is focus on a little bit of single leg stuff, and then bring it all together, balancing out the hips, working on that double. And we'll show you some different options in terms of where you can do these touchdown squats and some key points to think about, all right? You're gonna hit that anywhere from two, we'll say two to three rounds if you'd like to add one more set in there for a warm up. Uh, but two rounds, and then we're gonna move into our, our work set, all right? We have five rounds. We're gonna work through a tempo goblet squat or a front squat, and we'll show you different variations to play with with that dumbbell or kettlebell. Uh, you're gonna do a set of eight to 12 with a three second lower, zero pause, three second stand. So nice and slow on that squat, and it's really gonna be the up that's gonna show you some grief, okay? But play around with that, we'll have some fun with that eight to 12 set. When you're done your front squats, you will then move right into a super set of a forearm plank of 30 seconds to a minute, then you'll rest, and then you will do it again, all right? And you'll have that for five rounds. So that's a fair amount of work in terms of the squats. So pick a rep scheme that's gonna work for you. If you wanna change the reps and start at 12, work your way down to eight throughout the rounds, I'm fine with that too, all right? But play around with it, have some fun with those squats, and focus on good quality squatting, okay? We'll go through a round of that with different options, but for now, we'll move over to the next piece, three to five rounds. We have our plank lean for 10 to 20, alternating back and forth, laying arm extension afterwards, and if you'd like to load that, you can load that movement, all right, anywhere from 10 to 15 reps. And both of those first two exercises have a one to three second hold at the top of the movement, which we'll show you in our demo as we get going. And then we're gonna finish off with some scat push-ups, 10 to 15 reps, slow. Slow is relative, all right, so just I don't want you blasting through them. All right, but you can take it at a tabletop or a full plank position. All right, so you can kind of play with that where you need to. Rest as you need to, we'll take that through three to five. And then we have this optional piece down here if you wanna work on a little bit more upper body love with three to five rounds of tempo push-ups. So eight to 12 reps again, three second lower, three second up, anywhere from those to that rep range. And again, we can play around with the toe push-up, toe to knee, knee push-up, back of a couch or counter push-up. We'll show you all those options again today as we get going. You are going to superset that push-up set with a hollow hold on your back, anywhere from 20 to 30 seconds. And then again, giving yourself a good chance, chunk of rest here, two minutes, all right, before we hit that next set, all right? So we'll demonstrate all that stuff for you coming up to very shortly. For now, let's warm you up and get you ready. All right, you guys, let's get you guys warmed up. All right, we're gonna take a quick head to toe, body warm up and wake up, and then we'll get you into those movements. So we're gonna get our feet right underneath those hips. We're gonna take the arms big and tall up overhead. We're just gonna reach it to one side, just wake things up, and then reach it to the other side. Oh, and we'll come down, hands to the hips. We'll take those hips around nice and gentle, just kind of exploring full range of motion for those hips, and then we'll go the other way. Give you a relatively brief warm up for you guys to guide it today before we get to our work set. Then we'll bring our feet together and then we'll take those knees around, super gentle. Really focus on keeping those feet flat so we can wake up the ankles as well. Then we'll go the other way. And then we'll come back to center. We're just going to separate the feet a little bit. We'll roll up onto the toes and then back to the heels. And up onto the toes and to the heels and toes. Good, we'll plant those feet, big stretch up overhead. We'll forward fold, we'll touch those toes. We'll walk up the shins. We'll come back down, framing a foot, and then stepping that foot 
back. And from here, we're just going to take the inside hand onto that front foot and turn the torso towards the outside hand. And then come back to center. And then turn the torso back to center. And turn the torso and back to center. We'll lower the knee, press the hip, come back to center, press the hip to center, and the hip, and back to center. We'll plant the hands on the floor, press the heel, step back into that down dog position, reach those hips super high. We'll walk the heels out one at a time, just back and forth. Get a nice little walk on there. And we'll balance it out one more per side and step that other foot up nice and square into that lizard. Inside hand again is going to lock the foot down. We're going to turn our torso to the outside hand. Come back to center. And turn. Back to center. And turn. And back to center. We're going to lower the knee. Press the hip. Come back to center. Press the hip. Back to center. And press the hip. And back to center. Take the hand on the floor, press the heel, step back into our high plank. Just gonna hold that for three, two, and then tiptoe those feet up. We're gonna roll ourselves up, big tall stretch. Clasp those fingers with a reach and stretch, a reach and stretch, and come back down with those hands. All right. So, if you wanna do any extra warm up, roll out those hips, glutes, quads, whatever you need to do, please do so. Uh, we're going to move on into our first phase of the warm-up. We're going to get John kind of moving through here with our touchdown squat. So our touchdown squat will get him to face this direction or that direction so you can see him from the side. And in this touchdown squat, he's going to work through just like he was standing on a step at home perhaps, or if you have something, just a slight lift. He's going to pull his hips back as far back as he can, softening his knee as he tries to touch that foot to the floor and then just stand straight up. So depending, we'll get you to go through a couple more reps. We're gonna try and keep that knee as stable over top of that heel as he can. Nice vertical shin, very nice. And pulling those hips back, working on finding his glutes and his hamstrings. This is an extremely challenging movement. We'll do two more here on the face. Challenging movement in terms of balance, stability, the ankle, the knee, all right? So it's a really valuable exercise, okay? So we're gonna get him to get one more in on this side, and then we'll get him to turn to the other side, so you can see, again, this light, nice little movement here is all about stability, all right? It doesn't have to be high to be effective. If you have a stair at home that has a handle or a railing, you can stand on that one stair and hold on to it. If you have uh, just a little lift, a little piece of wood or a little, little lift in the kitchen, um, you can kind of use that as well. Just find something that you can get a little bit of lift on that Really, the goal is to heat up your glutes and hamstrings and work on a little stability. All right. If you don't have anything to do this on, you can do those single leg reach backs, and that is just fine as well. Okay. So from there, we're gonna get John to the floor. We'll get you out in front here, facing the camera. He is gonna work a side scale raise. So follow up on your feet. Yep. Side scale raise. So he's gonna stand up super tall, working on his balance. His body can be wherever it needs to be. He's going to keep that leg super straight and lift that leg to the side and come back down. Good. And he's going to take it up. Not going as high as he needs to go just to make the glute cramp up, but just before that. Just so you can feel that glute kick on. He's going to work his balance. He's going to work that ankle. A big thing for you guys to think about. We have one more on this side. A big thing to think about is keeping that big toe down to switch sides. Big toe down so that he can really work on engaging and firing and just better balance, all right? Because if we let that foot roll onto our pinky, we're going to want to topple over to that side, okay? Hands for this can go wherever they want, but we want to try and stay square, and he's doing a really good job of staying upright, all right, in that position, okay? So for the first, or the next one we're going to work on is our back scale raise. So we'll get him to face this direction. Same idea, we're going to try and keep the hips level as we Pick a foot and he's going to hinge at that hip, letting everything come down together. Perfect. I love it. And then he's going to come back up. Again, super important with this is making sure his hips are square. He's only coming as far forward as his balance will allow. And he's taking his time. All right? If you rush these things, 
do definitely and we'll topple over. We want to make sure that we're not hopping all over the place, but we are working on our balance and our stability. Really nice option for you guys to play with. Just imagine those little, those toy birds that go tink, tink, but we're going to be a lot slower, okay? So in this one, slower the better, take your time, feel out that weight, feel out those positions in that foot, and make sure everything feels good. Good. Very nice. Hands again, too, can be wherever they need to be. Personally, for me, I like my hands palm up so that it keeps my chest a little bit more open and allows me to stay a little square in my upper body. But it's, again, it's personal preference where we need to go. And you notice, too, where John, in the first side, the first one's a little high, and then the next couple, he started getting a little more comfortable with his balance, and he got lower. You might find the deeper you get into this set, the more depth and more range you might get. Okay? So that'll get those legs kind of nice and fired up. Now he's going to lay on his back. And for now, we're just going to do a couple bridges. Nothing too crazy. We've demonstrated the bridge a couple times throughout the last couple videos. But he's going to get his heels just outside his fingers. And he's going to squeeze his glutes. And then he's going to lower back down. And then he's going to squeeze and lift and lower. Again, we'll do uh, three more nice and slow. Shoulders and feet are taking the brunt of the weight. His head and neck, yes, they're on the floor, but they're not taking the weight of his body. So make sure that you're not feeling that extra strain in your neck and you're feeling those shoulders and those feet taking the weight. Okay? So he's got a really good squeeze, really focus. You can give yourself a little poke in the glutes if you'd like just to make sure they're firing. But that's a really nice you want to load it, you can. We're not going to go there today, but if you'd like to, you just hold on the hips and work on that bridge. Okay? Good job, John. That is our warm-up for you guys. If you would like to do a couple more rounds of that, please pause the video now. Do a couple more rounds. Again, anywhere from two to three rounds of work set just to get things fired up. Okay? We're going to move into our work set where John is going to go through a couple variations of our squat. So we're going to do one round um, on the video. But in this one round, he's going to go through a goblet squat, a single arm front squat, and a slightly different style of front squat with a dumbbell. And remember, you can use whatever you need to, dumbbell or kettlebell. So what he's going to do is he's going to grab his weight, he's going to pick the dumbbell up, and he's going to hold that dumbbell under his chin, and he's going to work on a three second down squat. So he's going to take it down, three, two, one, and then he's going to stand three, He's going to do three more at his own pace. The biggest thing here, again, our body staying upright. His heels and his feet are flat, and his weight is through his midfoot. And he's giving just a gentle little pressure out of the knees to make sure he's staying stable through his pelvis. All right? He's doing a really good job of keeping his body upright, and he's keeping his elbows to the front. All right? They don't have to be up here, way up here like a front rack, but we do want to keep them up. Okay? Now he's going to do four reps for us. Uh, two on one side, two on the other side with a single arm front squat. So he's going to clean the dumbbell up, he's going to rest the back of the dumbbell on his shoulder, and he's going to keep that tempo again. He's going to go three, two, one, and stand. Good. Nice smooth tempo here. He's going to get those reps done on his own. Again, the dumbbell is resting, his elbows are up, and it, again, he's got a nice position that is going to require a little bit of load on his upper body, so it's going to build a lot of strength. Try and avoid stacking it right up on your shoulder, all right? Although it's still going to load your squat, it's not going to give you that upper body engagement that we like to build during the front squat, okay? Perfect. I like it. Now, if you have two dumbbells or stuff like that at home, two kettlebells as well, for stuff if you have that gear at home, you can use two dumbbells for those front squats if you like. It's the same squat, except you have both dumbbells on the shoulder, okay? So if you'd like to do that, you can. I know most of us only have the one, but if you do have gear at home, you can definitely do a double front squat. This next one, he's gonna hold both ends of the bell under his chin, elbows are up, and he's gonna keep the same squat mechanics. So his hips are going back a bit, knees are going out, he's hitting the depth that he needs for his squat. Everyone's squat's a little bit different. We wanna make sure we're getting our range of motion. All right, so we'll get two more at home with that nice new tempo. The only difference, again, is him holding on to the bell to the front. Elbows are looking more to the front, and that'll kind of load that upper body a little different, all right? Neither option is right or wrong, all right? It just depends on what you want to do today, okay? Super good job with the squats. So 
So he's done his 12 squats, all right? He's done his 12. Now he's gonna superset with a nice 30 second, two minute uh, forearm flex. So he's gonna pop on the floor. He's gonna set himself up on his forearms. He's going to extend that body and he is going to press up through those shoulders, squeeze and tuck his pelvis, and he is gonna hold strong. So he's trying to press through the floor and he's gonna keep an, this nice kind of neutral forward. And he's gonna hold that for about 20 seconds. We're gonna hold him there for a few more seconds just so you can see it. And if you'd like to even, you can even drop to his knees and just make it a little less load on the position of your arms if you have to. But that's his knee for our plank. All right, he's got a pretty strong plank looking right now. So what we'll do is we'll get him to pop up and he's done his first official round of work. All right, and then what he would do, I have two minutes here, but if you'd like to rest, you know, anywhere from two, even a little bit longer or even a little bit shorter, but I wouldn't go less than 90 seconds just because this is a little bit of strength work and we do want to get that rest in there so your body's good to go, okay? So we have shown you all variations of the front squat and goblet squat. Pick one, live with it for that day, play with it, make the best variation you can, all right? So now, if you want to pause it, you can. Take down your five rounds with that rest, no rush, take your time, all right? But what we're going to do we are going to come back into this next piece. We're going to demonstrate some leans, our leg arm extension, and our scapular push up. So for, for now, John's going to kind of do a couple reps to the side and a couple facing you so you can see the, the plank lean. We've done these multiple times, but for today, again, we're going to press into those shoulders super strong, tuck and squeeze the pelvis, and he's going to keep that pressure back and forth as he shifts. And you can hold anywhere from one to three seconds per side. That's perfect. Now he's going to bounce one more per side and he's going to turn to the front so you guys can see from the front in terms of him shifting. Regardless of his position in the camera, he's still pressing up into those shoulders. His eyes are looking slightly neutral and forward just to, so he's not like rounding out with his neck and he's staying super tight to your knees. All right, just a couple more and that should be fine. Good. So plank lean. In the work set, you have anywhere from 10 to 20 with a one to three second pause, all right? So now he's gonna lay on his stomach uh, to the side, so you can see it from the side again. Oh, his stomach's again. And he's gonna have that nice set position, toes are at a point, pressing into the floor, his palms are up, and he's gonna get tight through his pelvis, and he's gonna lift those arms up to his range, hold for one to three seconds, and lower. And he's gonna lift to that end range, hold, and lower. And he's gonna do that for about five more reps, just talk about some things here. Again, if you have some lighter loads, even if you have some like cans of anything that you can hold just to, to kind of load that a little bit more, you can. Remembering we're listening to um, our range of motion. This is a little bit of strengthening it in range. All right, so this is never going to be about a max load. Everything you use in terms of load for this, if you're going to use load, should be very, very manageable and something that you can handle no problem, okay? So laying arm extension, tight to the core and just working on moving those arms. If you have pets, be prepared. They might come jump on you or land you slash lick you. Embrace it, have some fun with it, all right? But uh, hopefully they don't like it too much in that one. Our second or our third exercise in that set is our scapular push-up. And we're gonna show you from the plank and the table. So first off, we'll go from the plank. Again, normal plank rules apply. He's gonna press into his shoulders, get tight, tight through his glutes. He's gonna pull his shoulders together and then he's gonna push them up. All the while, we'll do both pull. All the while, his arms are staying straight and he's keeping his eyes neutral, all right? We don't want to try and initiate this through the head and get that kind of chicken neck kind of motion going, all right? We wanna initiate through the shoulder and the scapula. From here, if you're like, yeah, I can't quite do that from the plank yet, um, we can lower down to the table or even a three-point table. So our table is all fours. He does the same thing, pulls the shoulders down and then presses up. And if you want to do a little bit more load on the arms, all right, what we'll get him to do in his next rep is just extend one leg. So he's in a three-point plank. So he loads it a little bit more in the shoulders, but he's still supporting with the knee. All right, and you can do that with both sides and play back and forth with your reps, all right? I don't care how slow you go with these, but I don't want you to kind of blast through them, all right? I want you to really focus on the 
pressing through the floor of those arms as we isolate the scapula. Okay, so that's our next work set uh, in terms of that piece right there. We have it three to five rounds. Try and keep that one with the rest a little bit less, so anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute between rounds, and it'll get a really good burn going. Okay, so our last piece is optional. We have three to five rounds of some upper body gloves, so a little bit of upper body work. What we're going to do is we're going to work on some push ups. So we're going to do the same thing we did kind of with our squat. We're going to show you a bunch of different types of push ups, and we'll also bring the box in to, to uh, show what we can do with the counter or a chair or a couch. All right, we're building something that's not going to be too much. But first things first, we're going to get a few toe push ups. So he's going to get set up in his plank. It's going to be another three second down, three second up, and that up is going to get tough. So he's going to stay super tight in his glutes, tight in his shoulders. He's going to come slightly forward and down at that nice three second tempo, and then he's going to press up that nice three second tempo. I'm going to do three of each of these movements. So nice and steady, he's staying super tight, his elbow is stacked over his hand, and he's keeping all his fingers down flat on the floor, just like we would if we were squatting with our feet. Okay? From here, he's going to lower through our plank, and then he's going to drop to his knees. When he gets set up, he's going to lower three seconds down, just like he did before. Once he gets to the bottom, he'll lower to his knees, and then press three seconds up, and then finish the rep back in his plank. So he'll do that two more times, nice and smooth. Good, lower to his knees, staying tight, press, and then back up. One more rep. These are not as easy as you would think, all right, because that lower is still loading your arms in that full plank position. All right, from here, we're going to move into our next option, giving him a little rest. We're going to drop down to our knee plank and our knee push-up. I'd still like you to start this from a full plank, so John's going to get into his full plank position, setting the glutes, setting the shoulders, and he'll lower the knees down just a bit, so he's in a set, but he's still flexed through his pelvis. And he's still going to lower forward and down with that same tempo and then press with that same tempo. We'll get two more at his own pace. He's doing really good with the tempo work, you guys, keeping his eyes set to a neutral position, which is really nice to see. And his elbow is still super stacked over the top of his hand, which we really need in those knee push-ups. Okay, awesome. From there, our last variation, if you're like, ah! They usually use a bar or a lifted push-up. That's fine. All right, that is fine. We have our trusty couch. We have our countertop. We have a chair. Again, just make sure it doesn't move. But John's going to get set up on this box. We're going to use this as our, our couch. All right, we're going to grab the edge of the couch. We're still stacking the shoulders over the hands. He's still tucked in his glutes. And he's going to execute three more reps with the same tempo as before coming all the way down, and then back up. Beautiful work. Still, super, super challenging, because we're maintaining that tight, tight glute position and tight rib position. Okay, so really important, we want to make sure that we're focusing on that nice and steady and nice and slow. All right, super good job. Good job, nice work. All right. He's done his set of push-ups. All right, whichever option you chose, he's now going to move into a super set. He's going to lay on his back, and we're going to do a 20 to 30 second hollow. So we're going to do a couple different variations of the hollow. So we're going to start off with a double foot, double hand. So he's over top with his arms, legs are super straight. He's going to press his low back into the floor and lift. And we're just going to hold him there for another five, four, three, and he's going to relax. We're going to show him a different variation here. So we're going to do one arm, one leg. As he presses down, he lifts an arm and a leg. Good, I should say both arms, yeah. <laughs> My bad, that was kind of confusing. One leg, both arms, into that nice solid hollow position. And just kind of balancing out the legs. So from now, he'll just switch his feet if he wants to, and then he'll get both sides kind of working. So you can break up that 20 to 30 seconds into whatever chunks you need to. All right, and then lower down. The other variation we can use is the front lever position. So his hands are gonna come down the side of his body, and he can do this with a double foot, or a single option as well. And he's gonna come into this nice little hollow position and then switch his feet after a certain amount of time, or he can use both feet up. All right, so nice hollow position, not as much load on the midline, so it's a little bit easier than hands above the head and then relax. And finally, if you do struggle
struggle with that a little bit more so, you can kind of push the hands into the floor and use the floor to help you, all right? So that's another option as well that just gives you a little bit more engagement through the upper body, all right? So next chunk of work there, 20 to 30 seconds of hollow. We're gonna give his abs a little bit of a rest for now. Again, there's a two minute rest, so anywhere between 90 seconds to two minutes or even a little longer if you need it for those push-ups because they can be a little harder to recover from, all right? Is perfect, all right? Now, three to five rounds, that one's optional, but if you're gonna tackle it, three to five rounds with rest, all right? If you'd like to pause that video so you can pause it and continue on, uh, you can, but for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you through a quick little upper body kind of piece with some uh, scapular push-ups, thread the needles, and a few little cool-down pieces there, okay? So I'm gonna get this lovely couch out of the way, and then we'll get you guys going with this one. So I'll face the front, John can face the side again. We're just gonna get into our tabletop. Setting up that table, hands under the shoulder, knees under the hips. We're gonna work through some scap push-ups, just a gentle little one, nice and slow, and then press into a cat cow, tilt and reach through the pelvis, roll up, neutral table, take the right arm to the sky, thread through, we'll come back up, plant the hand, other side, take it up, thread it through, come back up, plant that hand, from here, we're gonna move back into our cat cow, tilt and reach. Roll up, neutral table, and then one more scat push. Pull the shoulders, press up. And this time we're gonna walk up our quads to a nice kneeling position. Big, tall reach overhead. We'll reach to one side, reach to the other side. It'll come down with the hands out of the hips. We'll inhale, pull the elbows back. Open and exhale, close. Inhale, open and close. And open and close. Big open, big reach. Good, big stretch to one side. Big stretch to the other side. Good, we'll come back down into our table. We're gonna lean to one side, bring our left leg up so the heel is under the knee, back knee is under the hip and under the shoulder. Hip is super square, and we're gonna squeeze the glute, get that nice little stretch through that hip, staying as tall and as vertical as you can. Just breathe through the belly and the lower ribs. Nice full breath here. You can use your hand and your belly for a little reference. And as you exhale, we'll come down with the hands. Press the heel back into our lizard, just reaching through the crown, back through the heel, so you can stretch that out really well. And we'll exhale, lower the knee, step the foot back and switch. So we set that heel up under the knee, knee under hip, under shoulder. Bring that hip nice and square to the front, and then squeeze that glute. Remember, if you're at home and you need a little pad for your knee, that's fine. Keep squeezing that glute, get that nice tuck and squeeze, and just breathe. On the exhale, we'll lower down with the hands, we'll press that heel back nice and straight, reaching through the crown, pressing back through that heel, long, long position. And then we'll exhale down, come back into our table, and then from here we'll get one more cat-cow, big tilt and reach. Roll up, neutral table, and then we'll take a moment. If you would like to do any more cool down, mashing, rolling of your quads, your glutes, lats, any of that stuff, please do so. We did some, some upper body stuff too, so triceps might be a good place to go. But thank you again, you guys, so far. We're gonna start with that lovely Monday of, uh, of strength. Tomorrow we got a little bit of a uh, little bit of fun coming for you. I'm not going to say what it is, but again, we're joining two birthdays together. But besides that, Greg, I hope today you're having a fantastic birthday. Enjoy it, live it up, get outside, have some fun. But I hope you guys enjoy those squats and that upper body strength afterwards. All right.
post, comment, get it out there, let everyone know what you did for your squats, how, you, how they felt, how they went, and remember, if you have any questions, don't hesitate, just ask, alright? Have a good day, you guys, enjoy.